Welcome to this lecture on digital communication using GNU radio. My name is Kumar Appaya and I belong to the Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT Bombay. This lecture will be a continuation of our discussion of perfect codes and Hamming codes. In the case of perfect codes, let me just recollect, let's just recollect. In the case of perfect codes, what you must know is that whenever you receive any n length bit sequence, then a minimum number of bit flips will give you a unique code word and there will be no ambiguity. As an example, if you remember, a 3-1 repetition code resulted in a perfect code because all 3 bit sequences could be mapped back to a single code word with minimum number of bit flips while a 4-1 repetition code had an ambiguity and it was not a perfect code. We also discussed this Hamming weight and distance concept. In the case of binary vectors, Hamming weight and distance are very related. Let us just recollect very quickly what this is. So if you have an n bit sequence, the weight, Hamming weight of the sequence equal to number of ones. in the sequence. And if you have x1 and x2, as n bit sequences, we define the Hamming distance dh between x1 and x2 as the weight of x1 plus x2. Let us give you, let us just take an example. If you take 5 length sequences 0, 0, 1, 0, 1 and 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, where are the bits different? Same, same, different, different, same. So, the way, the distance should be 2, the Hamming distance should be 2. Another way to find this is just XOR them bit wise. 0 XOR 0 0, 0 0 0 0 1 XOR 0 is 1, 0 XOR 1 is 1 and this is 0 and then find the weight of this 2 ones resulting in a Hamming distance of 2. So the Hamming distance is an easy way to kind of represent the number of bit flips that is needed to go from one n bit sequence to another and it comes in handy because we want to find the minimum number of bit flips that result in a valid code word. The other recollection that we want, I want you to have is that we want to find the least Hamming weight error pattern such that hx plus e equal to he is equal to hy. If you remember in the previous class also, we were discussing the fact that if y is equal to x plus e, where e is an error pattern, if you find hy, which is called the syndrome, we have hy is equal to h times x plus e, which is hx plus he. This is the advantage of using a linear block code. This is equal to hx is 0, he. So if you can somehow map he uniquely to an e, that is If he uniquely yields an e, which is the actually when I say uh, e of minimum Hamming weight, then we can correct errors. Okay, this is what we are going for. If you remember, for the 4-bit parity code, we could not map HE uniquely to an E. If you remember, if you have, let us say, let us take the repetition codes, parity check matrix. In the case of repetition code, G was 111. So I am going to write this um, as, okay, here there are how many 1-bit patterns are there? There are only two, uh, sorry, there are three one-bit error patterns. K 
can you can you now map H E back to E? Yes, because H E, what is H E then? I am going to write this as a row, bear with me. 0, 0, 1, it is 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, it is 0, 1, and 1, 0, 0, it is 1, 0. That is, you have a unique connection between these, and you can find out which error pattern there was. But let us say you have a code like this. Let us say that you have the 4 bit, uh, you have the 4 length error correction, you know, repetition code. G is 1, 1, 1, 1. So, in this case, you will have Now, okay, in this case, if you have a 4 bit repetition code, okay, if you have a single error, you can correct it because a single error is always going to give you 111, 100, 010, 001 uniquely. Let us say you want 2 bit errors. We'll, 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 we'll know there are many more, but I'm just going to kind of stop with this. Okay, so what do each of these give us syndromes? Let's check. Okay, so let's now check the syndromes in this case. For one one zero zero, we get zero. See, if I have to multiply by one one zero zero, that add the first two columns, so I'll get zero one one. Zero one one zero, I get one one zero. Then 1 0 1 0, I get 0 1 0. So far, so good. Okay. Then 1 0 0 1, I get 1 0 0 1, I 1 1 0. Okay. Now, notice that these two resulted in the same syndrome, and therefore, you cannot correct all 2 bit error sequences. So, in that sense, this is not a perfect code. So, this is actually a perfect code. This is not a perfect code. Okay. Because you cannot map all the sequences by performing minimum number of bit flips to a single sequence. Okay. Fine. So, this is something just to bear in mind. Now, let us actually use this as a pretext to define the Hamming code. So, this is something we just discussed. We were discussing 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. This is the, this is our, uh, you know, double parity code. That is, you would just repeat the parity twice. So, in this case, 0, 1, 0, 0, we said that the syndromes are non-unique in the sense that there is this 1, 0, 0, 0 also yields the same syndrome. So, we cannot correct the error unambiguously. Here, even for one bit error, we cannot correct it unambiguously. This is not a perfect code because the syndromes are non-unique. The three repetition code, perfect code, syndromes are unique for one bit flips. We are not talking about two bit flips that will result in an error even in the three repetition code, but for minimum number of bit flips, are they unique, then it is a perfect code. So, a perfect code is an n k linear block code where every n n sequence has a unique minimum distance code word that is the 2 power k code words perfectly partition the space of 2 power n n bit vectors. Of course, naturally that means into the n code words. For example, if you recall, if we looked at the three length repetition code 0000, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0 will map to the sequence 0, 0, 0 because a single bit flip gives you those. 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 will map to 1, 1, 1 because 1, 1, 1, of course, you do not need bit flips. All the other three, if you do one bit flip, then you get 1, 1, 1. To get to 0, 0, 0 for these, you need two bit flips. So, the minimum distance code words are unique. That is basically, if you take an n length bit vector and you perform the minimum number of bit flips, you will end up getting one of the code words. Okay. The question is, can we construct a family of perfect single error correcting codes? Okay. And there is a specific family of perfect single error correcting codes that we are going to look at and that is called the Hamming code. The Hamming code as it was among the first popular error control codes and that led to several other modern constructions. But it is very unique in and easy to understand and that is why we will discuss the Hamming code in some detail today. 
So without going to, into the details of how exactly they are formulated, I will go with an approach where we are going to construct the Hamming code using its parity check matrix. So the Hamming code is a family of perfect NK linear block codes. Perfect NK linear block codes meaning one constraint I am imposing is that any n bit sequence is going to be, is going to have a minimum distance code word in the code which is unique. That is no other code word will have the same minimum distance as this particular code word. Now notice that this n is chosen as 2 power m minus 1 and k is 2 power m minus 1 minus m. m is of course an integer which goes from 1, 2, 3 and so on. Okay, let us actually just analyze this 2 power m minus 1 We are talking about binary Hamming codes, okay. n is 2 power m minus 1, k is 2 power m minus, sorry, minus 1 minus m. Now this choice is actually a little strange, okay, but it will make sense if you look at the construction of the parity check matrix. Your aim is to, let us, let us, before uh, you know going further, let us just set m is equal to 1. For m is equal to 1, you get n is equal to 1, k is equal to 0 because you get 2 minus 1 minus 1, this is not a valid code, so you will set m to be 2. So m is 2. For m is equal to 2, we get n is equal to 3 and k is equal to 4 minus 1 minus 2, 1. This is the 3 repetition code. So the three repetition code is actually a Hamming code, okay, according to this definition. Now, the next code that we are going to do is m is equal to, and this is the code we will spend most of our time on, we get n is equal to 7, k is equal to 4, because uh, 2 power 3 is 8, 8 minus 1 is 7, 7 minus 3 is 4. This is the score called 7-4 Hamming code. Okay. Now, a discussion as to why this choice of 2 power m minus 1, 2 power m minus 1 minus m. Well, to understand that, let us look at the parity check matrix. See, our aim is to be able to correct exactly one error. Now, what does our error correction mean? In terms of perfect code, we discussed it, but let us look at it in terms of the parity check matrix. We want every syndrome, okay, we want for every minimum, you know, every least number of bit flips, every syndrome should be unique, okay. Now we want to be able to correct one bit error, that is among the seven bits, any one bit error should uniquely be able to get back the original code word without any issue. In other words, the minimum distance between the code words is such that if you flip one bit, still this is the closest code word, right. You take any n bit vector, this is a code word, let us say, you flip any one bit, the closest Hamming distance code word is always the same code word from which you started. Now, the way we are going to define it is this. This is the parity check matrix that we have, okay. And I am going to write it over here in a specific fashion. There are, by the way, multiple parity check matrices for this 7-4 Hamming code. We are taking this one specifically for just a reason, okay. I believe it was 1101, yes. Yeah, and then we'll place the identity matrix here. One reason why we place the identity here is so that we can easily write the generator matrix using that A I I A trick. So here we have the parity check matrix of our 7-4 Hamming code. We are now going to claim that every one bit error sequence results in a unique syndrome. Okay. Now I can of course I can go through and say what are the one bit error patterns? Zero error patterns is anyway, it is very simple because you get a code word directly, you can just read off what the uh, you know, k bit sequence is. This is of the form 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 
0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, and so on. Okay. I am not going to write them. What happens? E belongs to this. But what happens if you perform HE? It picks out the column corresponding to the non zero element in E. That is, let us say that the error occurs in the first bit, then you, your syndrome is going to be HE, which is 110. Error occurs in the second bit, your syndrome is going to be 101, which is in the second bit. Error occurs in the third bit, it is going to be 011. So, every one bit error results in a unique syndrome and this syndrome is just the column. Therefore, what do you need to do? You just need to add, perform h times y, where y is the received n bit sequence. That results in h times x plus e, which is h e the H E is going to be one of these columns, depending on which column it is, flip that bit, you will get a code word. That is it. I mean, it is it's, it's that, it's that, that simple. If you now you see how we have designed H, H has been designed in such a way <coughs> that any single bit flip is going to result in a unique sequence or unique syndrome. Okay. What do you need to do to handle this? It is very simple. How many single bit patterns are there? It turns out that let us say that you know, let us say uh, in this case we chose n is equal to 2 power m minus 1. How many single bit pattern error patterns are there? n. Okay. And now you need your h to have that many unique entries as the columns. Therefore, your h is going to be of size n minus k cross n. Okay, fine. So, now let us let us just understand this also. Okay. You have 2 power m minus 1 single bit error patterns. Okay. 2 power m minus 1 single bit error patterns. Therefore, you are going to have all m bit sequences as columns of H. So, in this case, you know, for example, let us say m is 3, k is 4, it is like, you know, your n minus k is essentially m. So, your in general, if you look at the Hamming code, h is going to be of size m cross n, where n is actually 2 power m minus 1 and columns of h are all 2 power m minus 1 non zero m bit sequences let's try this out okay i am now going to construct the Hamming code for m is equal to 2. I am just going to construct the parity check code. It is simple. I will put the, I am going to put the, uh, you know, column somewhat randomly, but let me just try to put the identity here 1, 0, 0, 1, and the remaining column is 1, 1. This is my h. Okay. What is the corresponding g for this? We will use the identity trick. We will put the identity here. Okay. Because this is of the form identity A and identity and A transpose. Not surprisingly, we get the perfect code, the 3, 1 repetition code. And if you now do m is equal to 3, you will get this. Let us just for fun do m is equal to 4. Okay. I am going to, I am going to write the columns out without thinking too much. 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, sorry, 0, I am apologize, I am just writing them down in this way, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and then I am going to, I am going to play a trick because I do not want to write so much, I am just going to 
copy this and then paste it, move it here okay. and then I am just going to play another trick because I am just little, I do not want to have to write this much. So, I will just delete this, oops, let us just delete this and now I am just going to write 1111111000000000. I think I missed 1000. Let me just add that. It does not matter, I, you can always swap the columns. So, this if you count has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 and this is 4. So, the next Hamming code is 154. I will check n is equal to 2 power 4 minus 1, 15, k is equal to n minus m, which is, ah, so k is equal to n minus m, this is correct, which is 11, which means this is 4, this is correct. Okay. Constructing the generator matrix for this is an exercise I will leave to you, I know it is not that uh, you can swap the column so that you get the identity on the right and construct, you get many answers, it is fine. Now coming back, all the columns are unique and all the 2 power 3 minus 1 non-zero 3 length vectors are present as columns. Here if you want to get a geometric idea, the first thing is multiplying it by zeros gives you 0, no problem that is always true for any parity check matrix. But multiplying it by any one bit vector always results in a, always results in basically a unique element. Here is, the, uh, here is the other interesting thing, multiplying it by 2, you know, multiplying it by any 2 length vector, okay, you can check. For example, if you take, uh, we can take 0, 0, 1 and let us say 0, 1, 1, add them up, you will not get 0. Similarly, if you take 1, 1, 1 and 0, 1, 0, you will not get 0. So, basically, here is the thing, even if you have a 2 weight kind of vector, you are not going to essentially get you are not going to be able to get a 0. So, you are you know you need to flip 3 times, you need to flip 3 times for you to be able to get 0. In other words, again this is something I am not proving formally, the code words of the Hamming code have minimum distance of at least 3. This is something which you can find out. So, any unique, any, any single bit error pattern uniquely decodable, okay. That is the key idea. So, now just using the same tricks that we did, you can always just construct the generator matrix. Okay. I believe that over here, let we can just use this approach to construct it. We will copy this. We will say, So, our 7-4 Hamming code has this kind of pattern. We will use the same approach that we used earlier. This is an identity, this is our A. Okay. So, now over here, our G is going to be, okay, have 4 length, I mean 4 rows, sorry. And we will put the transpose of this over here. So, 110, 101, 011. Oh, sorry. And 1101, 1011, 0111, and you have your generator matrix. These are also code words of the Hamming code. Let us check. One important observation the weight is. 3, meaning every code, non-zero code word seems to have at least 3 ones. That is, you have 1, 0, 0, 0 and then 1, 1, 0, you have at least 3 ones. And if you take 1, 1, you know, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, this corresponds to this column, this column, this column. If you add them, 1, 1, 0, ah, it is going to this column and this column, yeah. 1, 1, 0 plus 1, 0, 0 plus 0, 1, 0 will give you 0. Similarly, you perform the inner product with this, this will give you 0. 
and you can check that by going through all possible 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 and all multiplications with m transpose, you will get all 16 code words which are 7 length and if you now flip one bit of these, you can easily find out that there is an error. Flip two bits, you will find that you can detect the error but you will not be able to correct it. Okay, so let us just do that exercise also maybe, I will just do it for 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. Let us say you get this, okay. If you get 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, okay, you have a slight issue, okay, because if you know that two bit errors have occurred, great, you can always just, you know, say, okay, I, the two bit errors have occurred, I have not found it, but the syndrome is going to still give you an, a value. So, in this case, let us say this is our E. H E is going to be giving you, uh, it is going to add 100 and 001. So, if you add 100 and 001, you get 101. That means, it is indicating that the error has actually occurred over here, which is wrong. So, the decoded code word is going to be, and you can just check, I am going to write it as x hat, is going to be 101, which is this one. It is actually a code word. The Hamming code is a perfect code. For every syndrome, it is going to give you a corrected code word, but it will always make the assumption that you have one bit error and that is when you will make start making mistakes. So, if, the, if you have a single bit error, Hamming code will do the job. If you have two bit errors, Hamming code will also encounter bit errors. That is something you should keep in mind. Let us now go back to our content. So, whenever you have a single bit error, <coughs> the weight, Hamming weight of E is 1. Since each column of H is unique, H E is the location of the error, you flip the corresponding bit and that results in error correction. As I said, the block error probability, right? You can basically start with n choose 2, p square 1 minus p whole power n minus 2 and you know like you can, this is not exactly the block error probability because this is the probability of two bit flips and then you can add plus 3 and so on, but generally the p square term dominates. So, this is approximate. Whenever you have two bit errors, the Hamming code will is a perfect code. It always maps to a unique element. It will give you a wrong element and you will get a block error. Finding the bit error probability is little more intricate and I will leave that to some references. You can go check that out and then you can always just you know find out how that is computed. Now, if you want to go further, <coughs> If you look at the Hamming code, the rate is 2 power m minus 1 minus m upon 2 power m minus 1. That is, it is 4 upon 7 for the 7 4 Hamming code. If you start increasing m, right? So, for example, we saw that uh, over here, we saw that if you go for 16, right, you get 11 by 15 and so on, okay? So, the Hamming code is going to start giving you more and more, you know, uh, it's going to, it can give you, uh, you know, better rates as well. But for higher block ends, lengths, the problem is single error correction is generally not sufficient. That is, if you have only single error correction, what happens is that as the block length becomes larger, the probability that you will have more errors is much more. From a probabilistic standpoint, even if you have a coin that results in tails very rarely, as you make the number of tosses larger and larger, the probability of getting two tails is much, much higher. So, the using a Hamming code for very, very large block lengths is uh, well, it may be efficient from a rate perspective, but it is generally not a good idea because the ability to correct only one bit error is not enough when the probability of error in a binary symmetry channel is reasonably high. If p is something like 10 power minus 3, 10 power minus 4, 10 power minus 5, then yes, yes the Hamming code will result in a huge benefit even if you take the m to be a high number, but the problem is that, you know, when you have very large number of bit errors, then you are going to have issues. So, before we close, the Hamming code is like a motivator. Several modern coding techniques exist. Um, in fact, uh, before we go to those, algebraic block codes, uh, you know, it's like Reed-Solomon, Reed-Miller are very, very common. In fact, Reed-Solomon codes are used in a variety of applications. They are used as error correction in, you know, disks like optical disks, like, you know, compact disks and DVDs. Reed-Miller codes are also very commonly used block error, uh, you know, control codes. And there is also a family of modern block codes called turbo codes, LDPC codes and polar codes. These are all more of random, uh, uh, randomness oriented or motivated codes 
that can perform very, very well in large block lengths with excellent error performance and reasonably high rates. In fact, they are known to be very, very efficient and optimal also in the capacity sense. Capacity is something that we will go through in the next couple of lectures. So, the other thing is there are also a group of convolutional codes and several other such uh, applications of codes where they perform error control continuously and you can form a trellis just like your equalization to handle errors as you go. So, these are subjects for references where you can read some good error control coding related textbooks and I encourage you to do so. But in short, the Hamming code and linear block codes are very efficient and effective and they offer a good solution as a starting point for error correction whenever you have a practical noisy channel. In the next lecture, we will be implementing the Hamming code on GNU radio using a block and studying how the performance is going to be. Thank you.